I've got a message for certain students. Listen up closely, Snowflake. Yes, I'm talking to you. You, the social justice warrior who whines for trigger warnings and safe spaces. College isn't a babysitting service. It's time to grow up, Snowflake. Okay, that's a taste of what you might have seen on your local news, at least if your local news station is owned by Sinclair Broadcasting, a relatively obscure media behemoth that, unbeknownst to most of its viewers, insists its stations run these right-leaning commentaries and news packages. Now, Sinclair already owns more than 170 stations in 81 markets, covering an estimated 38% of U.S. households, and it wants to get bigger. A proposed $3.9 billion deal to buy Tribune Media would give Sinclair another 42 stations and the ability to reach 72% of U.S. households. Now, that level of dominance on the airways by a single company is supposed to be outside the bounds of the law. But this spring, President Trump's very pro-business FCC chairman, Republican Ajit Pai, invoked a controversial loophole in the law that would allow the deal to go through. And now, despite heated opposition, the deal is widely expected to be approved. Joining me now, MSNBC media analyst Gabe Sherman, special correspondent for Vanity Fair. So I want to start with the, the just how people yeah. know whether they're watching a Sinclair station, which is that, I mean, how do they know? The truth is they don't. I mean, Sinclair owns affiliates all over the country that are affiliated with the big networks. Uh, and so if you're watching your local ABC, NBC, or Fox affiliate in uh, a market, you may have no idea that the corporate owner of this network has a political point of view. Sinclair does not brand its networks. We are, like Fox News would say, we are a conservative network, where Fox News, the viewers would know that. Uh, Sinclair does not market itself as the owner of these networks. Yeah, and, and there's also the difference between local affiliates. I mean, when I grew up in New York, I would think of the, the, the network as the association, yeah. right? But outside of the major markets, like, you could be watching ABC in one market that Sinclair owned, and NBC in another, or CBS in another, and they're just owned by Sinclair, that those numbers... Yeah, Th those letters don't really mean anything in terms of the news program. Of course, and that's you know that is really why this is such a sea change, possibly in the American media landscape, where you have a ideologically predisposed uh, company that could push its message behind the curtain of objective news. I mean, this also we should just put in the context of a, a generational quest by Republicans to change the media landscape in their favor, going back to 1987 when Ronald Reagan FCC Ronald. Reagan's FCC repealed the Fairness Doctrine, right. which allows one point of view, which gave rise to talk radio. We are now seeing the rise, potentially, of right-wing broadcasting in television. Sort of a talk radioization yeah. of, of, of local news. Exactly. And, and how, I mean, how controversial is the approval of the deal itself? Well, you talk to people uh, in the media industry, whether or not they're ideologically aligned with Sinclair, and they say this is very controversial. And in fact, Rupert Murdoch has now made overtures for Fox to acquire more local stations because they don't want a corporate competitor like Sinclair to be competing with them. You know, there used to be laws in place that prevented the corporate overlords to buy up all the local uh, markets because you did not want to have a, a homogenous point of view. Right. And now that these regulations are being repealed, there's nothing to say that NBC or Comcast could go and buy up local stations. Yeah, we should be clear that, that, that part of that deregulation was the Telecommunications Act under uh, President Bill Clinton, yes. which allowed uh, multiple uh, yeah. outlets and markets yes. to be owned. Um, there's also, I mean, it, is, it, it seems like there's a little bit, at least, a faint whiff of quid pro quo here. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot today. You know, this is, a, is in a certain way, the definition of the swamp that Donald Trump wanted to, to change when he came to office. You know, Sinclair is pushing pro-Trump segments. They hired one of his former campaign staffers, Boris Epstein. And now the Trump White House is passing regulation to favor their media ally. I mean, this is, a, you know, a this sort of symbiotic relationship that that should, we should be, uh, you know, anyone who pref uh, is on the position of being against crony capitalism, they should not, you know, reward this behavior. Yeah, we should note that um, the decision is, the final decision has not been made. There are still public comments that you can make on the FCC's uh, website one way or the other, uh, and then there'll be responses. Yeah. Um, so the decision is not yet made, although a lot of people uh, are placing their bets. It will be approved. Gabe Sherman, thank, thank you for being with me tonight. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.